Hey, um, this is our second information talk on international travel and what's possible for seafarers. And we just wanted to update everyone after our last chat with, um, with our experts. So we're going to introduce them in a minute. Um, just quickly, I'm Lauren. I'm from Trilogy Luxury Training. We run Introduction into Yachting. We're the only iArmy guest um, accredited trainers in South Africa. Joining me is Sandra from the Yacht Purser. And she is down in Cape Town. She runs IAMI Guest Accredited Yacht Purser Training, as well as also being a very um, well-versed and knowledgeable about the industry. So together we're hoping to update you on what's happening with everything today. So, um, yeah, Sandra, over to you. And I see, oh, I see Chanel's here. Yeah, Chanel's from the Virtual Yacht Assistant. She is great with CVs and with information into getting into yachting. She also does a wonderful... Um, talk about exit strategy and financial planning. So welcome Chanel. Hey Chanel again and um, welcome back. And yeah, I guess the purpose again today, uh, you know, is people have had a lot of questions. So it's just to also introduce you guys to um, some of our travel experts and, you know, you are able to ask some questions later and um, we will be covering a few topics surrounding travel in the EU, you know, getting getting out of South Africa, um, you know, some some visa information. Again, it's still, it's so hard because, you know, each country goes on to different levels of lockdowns and you know I know that the UK is moving back to a different level now um, and every single embassy around the world has got a different approach to COVID so yeah you just kind of have to take it as it comes so thanks so much and um, yeah we've got some two experts here uh, Lauren do you want to introduce so yeah we've got um, Laura coming back she's joining us from South Africa this time last time she joined us from Italy and um, Lara is our um, travel expert and she's going to give us some information about what's happening now since the 1st of October, um, what's changed, what's possible, um, etc. So Lara, I'm going to hand over to you um, if you want to introduce yourself and, and just update us on what's happening around the world with travel at the moment. Yeah, so, you know, I'm Lara from Lara Travel. I'm sure you've just heard. I'm not talking to you from my car this time. Um, so yeah, I mean, I wish I had more concrete information, but it looks like the new new way of traveling is really just everything is continuously changing, continuously transient. So I don't think there's anything firm. Um, I just have to tell you that yeah, as as countries are getting uh, more more COVID um, infections, so they are changing the rules, and um, I just have to just tell you more and more um, that you need to keep checking and keep checking the requirements. So at the moment where we stand is that um, Europe is definitely starting to close up a bit there. If you're in Europe already and you have, uh, you're already in Europe um, and you look, I don't know if you can find work, I don't know if it's a season for work, but I would say if your visa is still valid, basically stay there because if you come back to South Africa, you may find it difficult to go back to Europe if that's your intention to come to South Africa for a bit and then go back to Europe. And the reason is, is that most of the European countries are not allowing um, leisure, leisure seafarer uh, work. They're only allowing um, merchant work. So that's going to be a problem um, going back into Europe. This is where it stands at the moment. As I said, it may change. Um, going into the US is not a problem. So if you have a B1 visa or an EU visa and you have a Siemens book, they're going to allow you to travel to the USA for leisure travel. Uh, you're working on a private yacht is no issue at all. But then coming back um, to Europe again is an issue. So yeah, it's a bit of a tricky situation. Flying into South Africa is no problem as long as you have a South African passport or permanent residence. So flying back home is no issue at all. There are other rules that you need to check, um, COVID tests and stuff like that that we can help with. But it's all dependent on what passport you have, what visa do you have, what country you're visiting. All the countries are, what's nice is that they're not saying Europe is closed. Every country in Europe has its own rule and its own, uh, you know, set of rules and it's forever changing so it's not like it used to be where Europe was closed so um, and it seems to be regions in their own country so like for example the UK have now got restrictions in different regions in the UK 
So, and that's going to happen in Europe as well. So Germany might be more restrictive in Munich, but not in Frankfurt. And so that's starting to happen. That's a pattern I'm starting to see. And when that happens, it looks like they, they're cancelling um, commercial flights and they're making it less, um, less convenient for people to enter those regions. So that's, that's the kind of thing we're seeing. And like I said, it's forever changing. Okay, so, you know, with it if forever changing, Laura, what's your best advice? Are you someone that people can contact yeah, to get please. that update? Please contact us. I mean, I've been in business 25 years. Laura Travel's been in business 25 years. We have fantastic relationships with principals. We've got fantastic um, methods of finding the correct information. You know, you're going to read the news media or Facebook or Instagram. Well, not really Instagram, but Facebook, and you have words like might, may, could be, would be, and these are not real real information, and people are just giving opinions, so please, I know you go out there and you want answers, but just remember they're only opinions. If you want a professional, accurate answer, contact us. We will tell you exactly what's what at the time that you need to travel, and, and it may not be what you want to hear, but it will be accurate and it will be correct. So rather contact us and we will give you the correct information at the time. And as you know, Laura, with yachts, it's often a very last minute sort of, um, you know, they might get a job offer, that sort of thing. And for South Africans that are sitting here, how, what can they tell potential employers, potential captains? What, can, you know, sort of can they, confidence can they give them in, in travel, you know, and in timelines, et cetera? I mean, I'm sorry if that's a, how long is a piece yeah. of string? Um, <laughs> you know, is um, there anything people could say in regards to employees and say, look, okay, this is my option, these are my options, or would that be again um, for you to I think as a South African passport holder, you're going to have problems obtaining uh, visas, although I'd, I'll tell you the Italian consulate have, have issued a Schengen visa recently, but they put on the Schengen visa, it's a long stay visa, but it says transito, which means you're only allowed to transit it's only meant for purposes of transit. So you've got to get to your boat or get to your workplace. You're not allowed to stay in Europe as a tourist. Although logistically, if you once you arrive, you pretty much you can roam around, nobody will even know. But just so you know, that's the rule that they're enforcing that you cannot stay in Europe for, for tourist reasons. Um, if you have a dual passport, that's always a winner you know, a dual citizen Europe passport. And there's a lot of seafarers with dual citizenship. I've noticed that, which is fantastic. Um, that will help getting you to Europe. So you're probably in a better position to find work if you have a European passport or a British passport than you would be a South African passport looking to get a visa because they, there are, like France are not issuing visas. I'm surprised that Italy have because they are not allowing seafarers for leisure travel. So it's a bit of a, yeah, it's a bit of a gray area now. And I think it's just temporary. They were always allowing, Italy was one of our favorite countries to enter, but now they're seeming, they're back pacing now about that. So, yeah, I mean, if you have a dual citizenship, I would say perfect. You'll probably tell your captain, listen, I've got a dual passport, but a European passport, then that's great because you, you'll get into Europe. Okay. And we've, um, just out of interest, you know, are you having people fly? Because we've got a lot of people asking about the US. And I know you mentioned it earlier, you know. Um, so you can't really go on and book a flight. Like if, you know, traveling from the US back to SA or traveling, you say it is a bit easier. But you can't, you shouldn't go online and book a flight. So is that, you know, I remember last time you were saying that they advertise flights. Yeah. But they didn't. Guys, seriously, do you, I mean, it, it may sound like a sales pitch, you know, that I'm trying to get business. I mean, it, it, it goes so far as that I've actually, I have a client that wanted to fly to the Maldives in December and I told him not to book it. And, and that's not a sales pitch because I told him don't book it. Book it two weeks before you're supposed to enter Maldives because, I, so I'm not here just because I'm trying to grab business, but I'm here to tell you, if you book your flights online yourself, you're going to you may enter problems. I mean, I would strongly suggest you check with us to check that the flights are still viable. There are a lot of airlines that are still not actually flying, but showing flights online. So there's a lot of that still going on. Um, just because commercial flights have opened doesn't mean now that online bookings are fine and that you're safe. It does not mean that. It actually, it's actually worse now. We were better. We were in a 
better position when there was repatriation flights because there were fewer options and we knew exactly, you know, but now it's like everyone thinks, oh, commercial flights have opened, let's book online, we're fine. You just have to do a COVID test and book online. It's not, that's, it's not that simple. Uh, besides, yes, you would need a COVID test, but there are um, online uh, uh, links that you need to fill out, a registration that you need to fill out online before entering a country. There are various other things that you may need or not know, or that route might not even allow you in, to enter that country on a South African passport. So I strongly, strongly resist, re, uh, you know, resist booking yourselves and trying to do it on your own. And are there repatriation flights still going or have they no. now cancelled all of them? So that's no. the past. Yeah. So there are no repatriation flights going. Um, basically, they're using commercial flights, but they kind of still have the rules of we sort of you don't have you don't need to get Durco permission if you have a South African passport, you could travel back home. Um, so some, some things have changed slightly, but there's still a lot to check. Okay. And um in regards to COVID tests and quarantine, what mm. you know, there's a lot of talk, you see it on the Facebook groups. And um, as far as I understand it, my husband arrived back on Sunday. He had to have a COVID test 72 hours before he arrived. He did that and he came through fine. They looked at it once mm. here in Durban Airport. Um, mm. Is that, you know, is that the standard now? What is, what the, what the rules are? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not really the standard. So the majority of them are saying 72 hours before. There are some countries that are asking 48 hours before. So, so it's not a standard. So don't just assume that 72 hours, like I said, the majority is 72 hours before. Some countries are asking 48 hours before. So it's not a standard rule, but it is a standard really that you need a COVID test done. Yes, that's, that seems to be the stand new thing that you need to travel with a, a negative COVID uh, result. Okay, perfect. Um, Okay, I think that's, you know, that gives some really good insight to where it is, as, as you said, it's maybe not what everyone wants to hear at the moment, but at least we know where you're standing. And, you know, Jackie's going to touch a bit more on the visas now. Um, you know, Sandra and Jackie are going to chat a bit more about the visas. I think Sandra yeah. wanted to ask something because she kept... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah and actually, Lauren, Lauren asked it. Um, it was it was about the repatriation flights and, oh. and booking and, you know, the... I mean, again, I, I saw it so much during, during, you know, lockdown and stuff, people trying to book flights, paying money, losing money. And, you know, my advice as an ex-yacht purser is just to always go through an agent. You know, I also, I'll be introducing Jackie now who I've used SA Yachties for my crew for visas, even though, yes, I can apply for a visa myself. Yes, I can go and do all of that. Absolutely. But I, you know, we chose to go the route of using an agent. I actually got a much longer visa um, and, you know, we were able to follow the correct procedure. So I'll introduce Jackie, Jackie in a moment. But um, just in terms of like the flights, I know with a lot of people, I've recommended them to go to, to various different travel agents, including yourself, to book those flights and just had a much better result. So, you know, again, it's just, it comes down to risk. You know, yes, it might be cheaper to book a flight online, but then if you lose that flight, then you've lost all your money versus paying a little bit of extra money, getting the advice, knowing that your money is safe with that agent, you know, because they do have the up-to-date information. And unfortunately, Regulations are changing all over the world. I mean, I don't know how many countries we're dealing with, but every single day they're changing and going, you know, to different mm -hmm. levels. So it's worth paying that little bit of extra money knowing that you are safe. True. So and Sandra, that's perfectly right. And I just want to mention that try use a reputable travel agent because yeah. that's also, you know, we're not all we're not all the same. And um and, I, and, I, and, I, and it's also, I mean, I'm going to pass business to Jackie as well, because we, we prefer to deal with professionals as well that know what they're doing, that have been in, this, in, the, in the game for a long, long time. Um, uh, you know, so, yeah, just deal with someone you know is reputable, that, that has been in the business a long time and know what they're talking about. Because the other danger is just um, phoning any number or just getting through to anybody, and you're not actually sure if they, they just try and to be after the sale or that actually, you know, worried about your best interest. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I wanted to actually introduce Jackie now from SA Yachties who, I mean, gosh, SA Yachties is a company that I've been dealing with for a very, very, very long time. They've been around for, gosh, um, 
so many, so many years now. I actually started my my yachting career with um, yeah Dave Pot uh, back in two thousand and six. So yeah, um, welcome Jackie from SA Yachties. So if you don't know, SA Yachties does assist crew with applying for their visas and their Schengen visas and. Um, you know, Jackie can explain a little bit more now about, about the process and what is open and, you know, what they're dealing with now in terms of the different embassies and, and the routes to go. So welcome, Jackie. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for the introduction and for the invite. We really appreciate <laughs> the platform as well. Um, I suppose following on what Laura has said about travel, the same applies for visas to a certain extent. So I'm gonna start off with the, embass the embassies that are currently open in South Africa. Um, and again, I'm gonna be centralizing my info on seafarers visas, no tourist visas from our side. Um, but the French consulate are open and they are issuing seafarer visas. Um, the Italian consulates are both open. Spanish consulate in Cape Town is open. Pretoria Spanish consulate is not at this stage, which is, you know, the consulates are run by two different visa heads. Each have their own approach to visas and their rules that they have. Um, but the Spanish consulate in Pretoria, we have had no luck with at the moment. Greek consulate in Cape Town open, Greek consulate in Joburg closed, German consulate open, and the Netherlands are still closed for seafarers. Um, all of these embassies are issuing visas to crew who are employed. So anybody who doesn't have a job cannot get a visa to go over and look for work through the French consulate as they are the only, in, the, the only consulate that issue that visa, allowing people to go over and look for work legally. Um, so only employed seafarers at this time. And my colleague in Cape Town, Nanette, so for all of our Cape Townians, we'll deal with Nanette. I head up the Johannesburg jurisdiction and both consulates, well, in the different cities, operate slightly differently to each other. Um, and that goes the same for the processing time for visas as well. Um, you'll find that the French consulate in Cape Town take two weeks to process currently. And in Johannesburg, they're taking seven days, one week. It's just, it's just slightly different. Um, yeah, but as for embassies that are currently open, we are we are doing business with them. They're only open once or twice a week, depending on the consulate. The French are open twice a week, Spain once a week at the moment, um, and Italy in Johannesburg have just opened up their second day. So they are operating on two times a week, a Wednesday and a Friday for visas. Okay, amazing. Thank you so much, Jackie. And in terms of, you know, what, what paperwork are they looking for? You know, besides, besides the usual discharge books, passports, letters from the captain insurance, um, application fee, passport photos, all of that kind of stuff, you know, are they looking for anything different um, to process the applications at the moment? So there's nothing out of the norm. I mean, we send out our checklists depending yep. on whichever consulate our clients are applying through. Um, there's no one size fits all checklist. It's, we have to adapt it slightly to, according to that consulate's requests and requirements, um, but nothing out of the ordinary. I mean, you don't need a police clearance or anything that you have to wait majorly in advance for. It's all documents from the vessel and privately from the clients involved. Okay, okay, no, that's great. And um, just in terms of, you know, the number of visas that you have, are processing at the moment i mean do you have are you seeing a lot of movement into in terms of crew just trying to get back to work um you know being employed obviously that's it's only for the employed seafarers at the moment i mean are they are people able to get them and get out and so i mean we are picking up speed again thank god because it was a really close call you know to almost calling it quits after COVID because with embassies closed and your, that's your primary business, you know, but the French consulate have opened, we're doing a lot of visas through Italy, we're doing a lot of visas through Spain. Those are the three common um, consulates that we're working through. And we are assisting crew who are currently in South Africa, who are needing to join their vessels. And we're assisting crew who are currently on their vessels in the EU through all three of those consulates. So it's a, it's a really big relief at the moment that we're able to do that. Um, this is not 
standard procedure for the French at all. Um, however, they are allowing it for a limited period to help crew who are on their vessels in France need to prove that you're on your boat in France in order for you to be able to submit your visa via proxy. And when time's up, time's up, we don't have an end date for how long they're going to allow this for. Um, right. But when they call it quits, you will need to return back to South Africa to apply in person. But for Italy and Spain, we can do these proxy visa applications while crew are on their boats. So um, just, just regarding the proxy visas, like what is the process for that? Do they have to send their passport? I mean, I know you have offices in France as well. Um, how, like, do they have to send their passport there or how, how does that work? Yes, so that's exactly what the proxy application is. Um, the Your paperwork, once we've done our checks, then the file is complete. Paperwork and the passports are couriered to South Africa for processing um, okay. and couriered back to the crew member on their boats. Uh, but we facilitate that courier service. Um, they would need to stay on their vessels with their Siemens book and right. for certified copies of passport and previous visa. And um, yeah, and then it's just, you've got to, you know, well, we advise always for our clients to chat to captains to allow this process to be done when it's convenient and when the boat is stationary. Because right. if you're on charter, it's not really an ideal time to be without your passport. And we, we don't ever recommend that. Yeah. Okay. And then just in terms of, you know, if, if crew are on a vessel, like let's say it's end of season now, I know it's been a weird, weird season. And, you know, they are stepping off the boat and perhaps they still st still have some validity on their Schengen visa. Are they actually able to step off and stay? I know Lara has said that, you know, tourism or like tourist travel is not really allowed in terms of South Africans um, being there at the moment. So are you seeing people having to leave immediately and come home um, or are they able to stay and, and perhaps look for another job in the EU or, or try and see if, if boats are crossing over to the Caribbean? What is the process with that? So the correct answer, um, and I speak for Italy and France, like Laura did say, every region within every country has different rules. Um, but for now, the Italians and the French are saying that if you come off your vessel, regardless of the validity of your visa, regardless of how many days left of your 90 that you have, you need to go back to your home country. Okay. You cannot flounder around France or Italy looking for another job, going for a two-week trip to Spain. You, you can't do that. You have to go back to your home country for now. Um, okay. I'm not sure when it's going to change. I, I got a message from Sam earlier that President Macron is speaking tonight. Um, okay. That may change. So we will be in tune for that to see if there's any new developments for France. But for Italy, as of news coming in this morning, no. You need to transit back to your home country unless you have residency in that country. Then you uh, can stay. So if you have residency, no problem. So if you are, let's say you're on one vessel and then you resign or you leave and you immediately find work on another vessel, are you able to then just, you know, step off and go onto a new vessel? Is that is that okay? Because you're, <laughs> Lara's got a hand up as well. <laughs> so it depends if you're, you know, if you've got validity left on your visa if your visa is expired there is something called a ship to ship transfer where you are able to do that you resigned or something's happened and you go to directly to your next job if your visa is expired um now with covid I, i'm not sure this is before covid very easily to do you had validity on your visa you could go to your next boat of course um an expired visa you could still go to your next boat but you needed that transit ship to ship visa to get you there right Laura I think also had a yeah I mean I just try and be real and um, I mean I'm glad Jackie mentioned and she said the words what's correct and that is true and I and I value that and we do the same we we tell our clients what the rule is but I also would like to mention that um things are very different on ground level and it, it you could probably roam around Europe, which is not something I should be advertising because the rule says you should not do that. But if you are stuck and you know you're going to the next boat for work or you know that you're going by, you are going to be able to move. There's no border patrol or, or border checks um, within Europe. So 
logistically, you probably will be able to move around, but there is a risk in the sense that if there is a border check or if there is a border, you know, you've got to have your answers in place that you're going for work or you, you've got to have the reason. You, you, you wouldn't be, be able to say, oh, I'm, I'm going on holiday to Spain for two weeks, you know. So, but, but logistically, because I think it's important to know that it is possible to move around Europe without anyone checking up on you. So if you are really crazy and you're worried about getting to a certain point, you can do that within Europe, uh, within the Schengen states without actually being stopped. And I think it's, it's also important to know that fact because um, sometimes these rules um, restrict you in, in finding maybe new work or, or even you know, getting to the point where you can actually leave the country. So um, yeah, I mean, there is the rule and then there is logistically what really happens on ground level. But remember that things are always changing. So they might do, they might face border controls or you know, between countries that are high risk or, so that could happen as well, you know? I think that's, you know, the, the, the whole issue with giving advice is that we can say legally what you're supposed to do, what you choose to do with that information is up to you, you know, at the end of the day, I do know loads of people who are able to go over there and get friends to give them letters and, and you know, enter into Europe and find a job. But, you know, again, just because somebody has done it and it, nothing has happened to them. And so, you know, people give advice, oh, I'm, I was totally fine. I was totally fine. Yeah, no problem. Absolutely. And then what happens is that there's that one person who gets caught and it's the end of their career because then they've been, they're deported. They're not allowed back in for another 10 years. So again, you know, when it comes to the legalities around visas, around flights, and especially now with the regulations for every single country, you know, you need to make up your own mind as to where, which side of the law you want to be on. You know, that's not something um you know we'll always advise to stay within the law and to stay within that because we have to so yeah if you find ways around that that's that's again you know it's up it is up to you but yeah um i have seen disastrous disastrous consequences um okay so you know just in terms of um you know the yeah i, I don't know for, for the actual like visas for um, for Europe, I don't know if anybody has some more questions. I know that there were some some people asking about the U.S. visas, which, again, it's it's another tricky thing. And I know you don't specifically deal with the U.S. visas, but um, do you have any information on that? I, I do have some information that I'm happy to share that um, you know I've, I've been told by other people and also on the ground and watching some other webinars this week. So. Um, yeah, please do share your information. Um, I was telling La Lauren earlier that SA yeah. are going to be entering that US ground yeah. shortly in the next few weeks. Um, but please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, with the with I think there was a question coming in um, on one of the social media platforms, just asking what is the difference between a C1D visa and a B1B2 visa? Okay, so first of all, the difference is a C1D visa is for commercial seafarers. So those are for people who are on cruise ships and who are on commercially registered vessels. So a lot of yachts, yes, are also commercially registered, which is why there um, becomes this confusion as to, you know, do you get a C1D visa or do you need B1B2? If your yacht is going into the US, most of the time they will switch to the private registration, which means that the correct visa that you need to work on board a yacht that is in the US temporarily just for repairs or you know, refits and stuff is a B1 visa. The B1 is the business side of it. The B2 is the tourism side of it. Okay. So the, the Customs and Border Patrol actually have a handbook. And in that handbook, they outline the specific chapter that deals with private yacht crew members and the fact that they need a B1. So whenever I'm doing a B1 application for any of my crew members, I mean, I don't do it anymore because I'm not on board. But when I did as a PERSA, I would um, specifically state in the letter from the vessel, the paragraph basically specifying that private yacht crew need the B1. We have applied for B1, B2s before um, and been issued a C1D at the same time because the embassies were unsure. And again, every single embassy across the world has different views and takes and interpretations of the actual regulations. So I think that's also what's a little bit difficult, um, you know, to understand that every 
every single person has, has got a different take on it. Um, the B2 part, a lot of embassies won't issue you the B2 part, which is the tourism part, unless you motivate why you need it. So the, the vessel can apply for your visa, your US visa. Um, you have to go online, fill in the DS-160 form, obviously pay the fee, um, you know, and book the appointment. But unfortunately, in South Africa now, they've actually shut down all of the appointments for the embassies, for, for the American embassies, for the US embassies. I have a lot of reports from um, various different groups that overseas, they have been successful in places like Stockholm, like Oslo, um, in New Zealand, Madrid, um, Montenegro. But again, you know, those people have been based there. You know, I've applied for B1 visas for crew in, in different jurisdictions, absolutely no problem. I myself received one in Berlin um, four years ago. Um, you know, and the yacht wasn't even there. So again, the, the big thing that you have to remember when you are applying for the visa is if you are, so it's, it's more for people who have been working on boats and you, you're working on yachts and you show that this is key to your livelihood. All right, so the US embassies want to see that, you know, you need this visa because you, you know, the vessels are over there, the jobs are over there, you're going over there, it's, this is your livelihood, okay? So that's the first thing. Obviously, the second thing that they'll always look for is the fact that you're not, your intention is not to relocate to the US. All right, so showing that you have some ties to your home country is absolutely essential, whether that's the mortgage, a car, family, I don't know, you know, um, a bank account, they want to see that you have ties to your home country. Um, so, you know, again, the, the information on the on the embassies that are open is also changing all the time. All right, so some of them were open and now they've closed down. You know, a lot of embassies around the world are very open to yacht crew members because they know, you know, they process them all the time. So they know um, that, that crew do go over. Obviously, again, you know, we did reiterate in our last call, looking for work in the US while you are in the US is illegal. You know, unless you have a green card, unless you have a US passport, um, you know, I, I was listening to another webinar um, talking about should crew go over there, should crew go dock walking. Obviously, with COVID and social distancing and, and, and all of that, even the recruitment agencies are just saying, do not dock walk. It's been seen as a very big no-no at the moment. People are going online. People are going virtual. So I know we had Alex from Yachty World on here last week or the last um, call that we did, sorry. And, you know, they've had a lot of success with the virtual dock walking and and making connections like that so you know again looking at your online presence looking at you know how you can connect with your recruiters online picking up the phone you know even if you are based in south africa you can't call overseas there's this great app called skype you can buy credit on it it's really really cheap and it doesn't cost that much to pick up the phone and call some recruitment companies in the states, in the in the um, you know in Europe, and form that personal bond and relationship with them. Okay, so if you are looking to get a job, that is my number one piece of advice right now. Start picking up the phone. They get hundreds and hundreds of email a day. If you are proactive enough to pick up the phone, get them on the call, form a relationship with them. That's always going to put you way ahead of all the other applicants follow up you know if you've had an interview follow up say thank you all right so those are just tiny little etiquette tips that will really really help you with your um with your job search um yeah and uh, you know in terms of the b1 b1 visa again you know it, it is really 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 just tough any update on b1 visas and when we may be expected to be able to apply in sa again i have a friend who has an appointment in february only that was the first appointment that they could get with the um u.s embassy in johannesburg um, he actually has a, a british passport and is um, he's actually currently in the states um, he had tried at various different embassies around the world. Um, you know, again, the advice is to find somebody, you know, if SA Yachties are getting into the B1 um, visas, then, you know, they have contact with the embassies. They would know who to contact there. They'll have the firsthand information as to, you know, when it is opening up. But again, it's just, it's, it is really difficult because every single embassy has different times and different rules and and will open up um in different you know um will open up at different times so yeah any more any any more info um jackie do you have not for the u.s side 
I've got for the other side, but not for the US. That can help you with Schengen info for sure. Yeah. Jax, yeah. sorry, there's actually some questions then. We, we'll get to those quickly. There's the yeah. common one, Ask everyone's sort of asking, when do you think the regulations will change? Um, and when will you be able to help with visas from, this is from Mecca. Um, will you guys be able to help with visas for green crew? Or do you only help with visas for people that are already employed? Oh, of course we help for green crew. Um, but there are no visas being issued for green crew because that falls under a tourist visa category. Um, and there are no tourist visas being issued. Only the French consulate issue a legitimate visa to allow a client over to go over and look for work. Um, and they, they're not issuing tourist visas at this stage. We have absolutely no idea when that's going to open up, unfortunately. There's no indication. Um, I, I can't answer that question. But as soon as they open up, green crew, of course, would be able to go over. And Jax, sorry, Sandra, I'm jumping in here. Jax, is there anywhere that you will announce that, that people can follow? I mean, have you got it on your Facebook? Um, is it that the best place for people to follow you on Facebook and, or Instagram? And will that be announcement be there? Absolutely. So we will announce on our social media platforms, Facebook and Instagram, and we send out a MailChimp, um, which reaches our five to 7,000 people. Um, if you did want your name on the MailChimp, you can always email me or Nanette at South African Yachties. So it would be Jackie, J-A-C-K-I-E, at South African Yachties.co.za. And we'll put your email address on the MailChimp and that announcement hits everybody at once. Absolutely. Perfect. Well, um, if everyone, and I forgot to ask at the beginning, if everyone puts their email addresses in the chat for me, I will send everybody a recap of this email at the end um, with everybody's contact details, with Jackie's contact details and Laura's contact details for, for you as well. Um, there's another question here, Jax, just um, from Ash. Is there any indications to when the Netherlands embassy might open? My God, they have been rock solid closed. So they are open to other visa types, but absolutely not to seafarers. So the latest we have with the Dutch, I just wrote my notes down here, is that seafarers on commercial and pleasure yachts are not, not included in the categories of visas that are being issued. So you may only transit through to the Netherlands. If you're flying into Amsterdam to fly somewhere else, that's fine, but you cannot join your boat in the Netherlands at the moment. They don't recognize seafarers as needing visas at this time. So then the, the Netherlands are closed. Um, so hopefully that answers your question there, Ash. If you could just give us a quick little yes, thank you in the chats there. Um, and Mika, sorry. Oh, there you go. Thank you. And then I've got from David here, is there any, is there no way of getting experience crew visa? I have three years under my belt and I've missed out on a ton of opportunities due to the fact that my Schengen visa has expired. I see that Cyprus is under the green list at the moment for tourist travel. Would it not be possible to apply for Schengen through the Cypriot embassy? So Cyprus, you need a separate visa. It's not a Schengen visa in order to enter Cyprus. It's a different consulate, different embassy that is not processed through the Greek consulate at all. Um, just to understand his question, he's got his experienced crew, but right now is he unemployed? That's what I understand. Is that right? Um, where's David, if, are you, if you can unmute yourself quickly and just answer Jackie, please. Yeah, he said that's correct, yeah. Okay, he so, said yes. Unfortunately, you know, he falls under that category of needing to wait for the consulates to resume processing for those visas, sadly. Perfect, thank you. I found, you know, for, for a lot of people that I know, you know, they've been able to get letters of employment through previous boats and then you know like to accepting a lesser position so basically if you have three years of experience under your belt saying I don't care I'll come in as the very most junior deckhand on a 2,000 euro salary um, and and fly over if you give me the boat letters you know so I have seen people especially experienced people saying right happy to accept a, a lesser position and a lower pay just to be able to get over there and and get some work and and still be employed and all of that so you know again if you have if you do have experience my my suggestion is reach out to your past boats you know see if anybody needs a totally green but yet experienced deck hat like even if even if it's not the position that you want right now all right 
sometimes just having something is better than sitting at home with all the expenses and having no money, you know, so um, again, it's just really what you are, what, what are you willing to accept, you know, you, are you, yeah, so that, that's always again. And Sandra, um, I, think, I think maybe with the, for the green crew out there who are listening today as well, also some advice for them, you know, guys, yes, it's hard and I know it's so awful getting all those knockbacks of looking for experienced crew, looking for you know, and you haven't got experience. And I know because we've all been there um, or Sandra and I have definitely been there and it is hard, but guys don't, you know, I've had two girls, three girls now who came through my course this, um, this year, who've now flown out to jobs. Um, and if anyone wants some inspiration, go to my website and read the blog about Shannon. Shannon is now in the Bahamas living her best life. <laughs> I see her on Instagram all the time. Look, and guys, it's just, you know, don't, don't lose hope, please. You know, even if you're green, I know it's hard, but keep going. It's this, I call it the shameless self-promotion campaign. If you know someone's brother's sister's aunt who works in yachting, email them and ask them for help, you know? <laughs> and the, the, the whole thing about yachting is that it's a network. Every single person is connected somehow. I mean, you know, I'm connected to, to Lauren um, from Trilogy, th completely differently to Jackie, you know, and we're all in shore based businesses now, but it's all yachting is one big community. So it is about networking. And like Lauren said, find somebody who you know, do you know someone in yachting? Great. Ask them if they know somebody, can they, can you contact them? Can they add you to a WhatsApp group? Can they get you in contact with somebody else? You know, it's all about being creative um, about, you know, when you're looking for jobs and, um, you know, so again, it's just leveraging your network. It's every, all, all job hunting is about using your network. Okay, so um, yeah, there's if one, you have any. There's mm -hmm. one other question there I saw. Um, are there any restrictions when transiting through the UK to get to the US? So I don't know if Jackie or, or Laura, either of you have an answer to that. Um, well, as far as I'm aware that you would need a UK visa if you are going to transit through the UK. Yeah, so you, it's a completely different visa again. Um, they don't allow you to transit through um, the UK at all without a transit visa. On, we're talking about South African passports, of course. So you would need to apply for a UK transit visa to, yeah, basically the answer to that. Okay, perfect. Um, right, I'm just looking here. So does anyone... Um, Jackie, Laura, do you have anything else you'd like to add? J Sorry, Sandra, have, um, is there anything else there? No, all good. Okay. Um, Laura, I'd just like to say that I would, you know, every visa application is treated on a case by case basis. So there's no one standard size fits all. What happened for somebody at the Cape Town consulate under the French consulate jurisdiction? might not apply for somebody applying through the Italian consulate or even through the French consulate in, in, in Johannesburg. Um, everybody's case is complex. Everybody's leaving a boat. This one's visa expired, then done, then they did this. We have to, it's like building a puzzle. So people come to us and we sit with your case and we work with you. We work out a timeline. What is the most appropriate route forward for you? It will be very different to a crew member on the exact same vessel. We have to approach that application differently. And there's no uniform outcome to a visa. There's no standard, well, the French issue three-year visas and that's what I'm going to get next. There's no way of predetermining what you are going to get from the consulate. They issue at their own discretion. Um, at SA Yachties, we do take immense pride in our work and we build very solid, very strong visa applications to get hopefully the most favorable result that we can get for that crew member. Um, we cross our T's, we dot our I's, we add in extra documents that maybe other people don't or other concerts don't request, but that's how we do our visa applications to ensure a good result. Um, you know, we've never had a denied visa on our books because we just... <laughs> We, we try and we stay updated with information and we don't cut corners and we don't lie to the consulate. That, that's a really big thing. We've been approached quite recently now with fudge documents and if I can get a crew contract from my boat that I worked on last, they said they will help me with boat papers. 
it doesn't work like that. We're not the right company. That's what you want to do. We are mm -hmm. above board. Our relationship with the concerts are solid and they've been solid for years. And that's how we like to keep things. So we are mm -hmm. very much above board, transparent, come to us for information, use us for a visa, invest in the process. Like Sandra was saying, mm -hmm. you can very easily do the visa application yourself. You can phone, can pay, mm -hmm. you can get the checklist from them. It, it's not a problem. But if you want it the most hassle-free way, stress-free, the easiest route to the finish line, invest in a reputable agent who knows the rules, who knows the regulations, who deals with these professionals on a daily basis and has the relationship building behind him. That, that's my advice. Um, could I just add to that? I mean, Jackie, you said it perfectly. Um, I just want also to be honest with your travel agent or to your uh, visa application agent um, to be honest about your circumstances don't try fix things or have a plan you know of your own agenda thinking that you're going to uh, you know because you're just actually doing an injustice to yourself so rather just be honest say what you want to achieve and we as professionals will tell you what you can and what you can't do and there's also ways of doing things legally that are correct, that aren't, uh, you know, being, um, you know, not having to put fraudulent or try to do funny things, but to actually do it legally correct. And we have, we have the experience to know how to go about doing that. So rather just be honest with your situation, tell us what you want to achieve, and we will tell you what's leg what's legally allowed, what you're legally allowed to do. And uh, yeah, I, I think that's exactly right, Jackie. Um, I think it's really, really great that we have this platform. I think it's fantastic if people start using professionals and people, I mean, I, I, I think it's great. I, I would support Jackie. I would support a professional as a travel agent um, because just knowing that you're dealing with someone that's had so many years experience and knows exactly how and how not to do things um, it, it'll save you money in the end that's that's our, that's what I believe in so I think this platform is fantastic and if we can encourage more and more people to actually use professionals and see what we're worth and I think this is the time where you where you'll, you'll notice our worth because it's not just, it's not so easy to find the correct information as it used to be. So yeah, I think this is a time where people will experience the difference between doing it on your own and doing it with a professional. And once they get a taste for it, they'll realize, especially professionals that care about their clients, that care about their reputation, that care about the job that they're doing, you'll find that there's a huge difference. And I don't think you'll ever go back to booking yourself alone again. That's my opinion. I mean, for me, just in my in my life, I book through travel agents for my flights. I was meant to go to Fort Lauderdale this year, and um, my, my the flights were obviously all cancelled. And I I always book refundable tickets because that's just you know. So and thank God I've just had been reissued all of my my money back, which is amazing. So, you know, again, thanks so much, guys, for for sharing the information and for for you know really just assisting. And you know, again. I can attest to to SA Yachties. I mean, I used them on the boat that I was in on like literally documents this thick, you know, making sure that you have absolutely everything. Um, so again, you know, for me, it's just, I would rather know that I, things are being done correctly. Um, I think we've also got another question here with uh, regards to the discharge books or the Siemens books. Um, Jackie, are you still assisting with um, the, the Siemens books applications? Can they do that without having the employment contract? Can they do that? Because I know so, Yes, we are. We assist through SAMHSA in South Africa um, and through most of the island flag vessels. So Cayman Islands, UK flagged, Marshall Islands as well. Um, you do need a work contract or a letter of employment in order to apply for a Siemens book. It's just, it's one of the requirements. You can't apply for a Siemens book if you don't have a contract. Um, and on that note, I also just wanted to mention that for any crew who are employed, who still don't have a Siemens book, my advice is to get one. Because we see a lot of that, you know, boats always come with unrealistic timelines and phone calls and franticness. I need to join my boat next Saturday. Um, you know, do you have a Siemens book? No. And it takes two, three weeks to get a Siemens book processed. Sometimes if we push really hard, we can get one in a week. Um, but if you don't have a Siemens book, get one if you're employed. So when it's time to apply for the visa, there's no delay on the Siemens book side. But yes, we can yeah. help with 
the flag state of your vessel or through South Africa? Very good point, Jackie. It made our lives so much easier when people had a Siemens book, especially during our repatriation time. And um, it definitely opened up more avenues and doors. So I, I said that on the last uh, meeting we had, please get your Siemens book if you can. And uh, yeah, as, as a travel agent as well, it made our lives so much easier. Yeah, and just if you have, so again, you know, if, if you are currently on a vessel, you need to apply via that flag state. So if you are in a Cayman flag vessel, there are forms that you can download. It's a very, very easy process. Um, it's all done 100% online. You have to pay a fee. Again, generally the vessel will pay the fee for you and they should be doing that. Um, and then they issue the, you that discharge book and send it to the hard copy to the actual vessel. Um, but again, you know, for you to be recognized as or to have seafarer status, you actually need that. And in fact, if you are traveling on the yacht to certain countries, um, we were required for every single crew member to have a discharge book to clear in as a seafarer. All right. Otherwise, I had to come on on the passenger list, which was, you know, huge problems for the vessel if we only were allowed 12 passengers on the boat. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I, I don't have any more information at the moment. Um, yeah. I think um, I don't see any more questions. I'm just having a look there. If anyone's got any more questions, please... Um, pop them in quickly now. And also don't forget your email address if you want to receive um, the link to this. Ah, Chanel. Chanel, mm -hmm. um, do you want to unmute yourself and ask a question, please? Hi, guys. How are you all doing? Hi, Chanel. Quick question. So South Africa has a high risk list of countries. And if you are flying from one of those high risk countries that are on the list to South Africa, Will you still be required to quarantine or will the negative COVID test be sufficient? I can answer that uh, firsthand. Uh, I flew from a high risk country recently, last week. I flew from Greece, which considered a high risk country with a South African passport um, and a, co a negative COVID test. That's all that was required. And um, no, I was not, uh, I didn't need, did not need to go into quarantine. So you do not need to go into quarantine provided you have um, a, a negative COVID test and you are a citizen or you have um, um, resident permits, um, you do not need to go into quarantine. Okay, super. Thank you, Laura. Okay. Thanks, Chanel. Um, right. Any other questions from anyone? Are we good? Okay. Um, well, I'd just like to say thank you so much to Jackie and to Laura for joining us today. We really appreciate your time. We know how, and to everyone else who's tuned in to listen today, we really appreciate everyone's time. Um, for We know how busy everyone is. I hope that this has been informative for everyone. Um, as I said, we all keep, and between Sandra and I, we always um, trying to keep everyone updated on what's happening and what's where everybody's is. Um, but please, yeah, feel free to reach out if you've got any questions reach out to Jackie, reach out to um, Laura. I'm gonna share their details quickly now on the screen and you'll see they um, just being technically challenged there. Can everyone see that? Have I done it right? It looks yeah. good. <laughs> um, so as you can see, there's everybody's details there. Um, guys, we just wanna help. We wanna help everyone get to you know where they wanna be, whether you're new in the industry or whether you are um, already an established crew member. And yeah, please feel free to contact any of us, as you know, Jackie, for, for um, visas. I know that SA Yachties is incredibly busy and I've had people say to me, oh, they haven't got back to me. Jack, so how many emails do you get a day in your inbox? Hundreds? I mean, La, I, between the net and I, close, yes. Yeah. And we do try um, get back to people as soon as we can. Uh, I think you know, sometimes one gets lost in, in 10 days and then it's a real big story. Um, but for now, even now put an out of office on, I've got so many balls in the air and visa applications on the go that it's just, I need to breathe, regroup. And Thursday again, I open my doors to allow new inquiries in. So we are busy and we do desperately try and get hold of everybody. But, you know, we are only two people, I guess. Yeah, so and I think my... my um takeaway there is please be patient and and realize that people are are, um, are humans as well 
So they, I know that SARTs does a lot of work and, and I know that Laura as well. So, but guys, we're here to help. We do want to help. So please be patient. And, and if you haven't heard it, like Jack said, every now and again, maybe one drops out just to do a little polite follow-up message. But guys- uh, work really well with me. I, I actually enjoy the follow-ups because it's me <laughs> going again. So thank you. Follow-ups work. <laughs> and um, yeah, we just want to say good luck, guys. You know, don't lose hope. It's, you know, the, the industry is alive and kicking. It's just getting yourself out there. Um, we and uh, running a competition at the moment, just, you know, Trilogy is running a competition where you can win a one-on-one -on -one chat with Sandra. Um, you can win a um, chat with Chanel, who is, um, you heard speaking just now, and she does financial exit strategies for yachting, which believe me is a very important thing to do. Um, also a studious course, you can also win, there's an ultimate ebook to getting into yachting and a CV toolkit there. So guys, go and have a look. Um, you know, these are, we, we really want to hear to help you guys and, and support you getting back into the industry. Um, so please keep in touch with any questions and yeah, as I said, hopefully this has been helpful and we hope that you all have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. So it's goodbye from me, Sandra, if you want to say. Bye. Bye. Thank you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Okay. Excellent. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.